Hi, my name is Pat Horn, and I'm the STEM coordinator here at the Lakeshore Museum Center. And what I want to do today is I want to show you some different skulls that we have in our museum's collection and just show you some of the different things you can learn about an animal by looking at its skull. Now, before we begin, one of the things I do want to mention is that the museum does not go out and actively hunt these animals for their skulls or their fur or anything like that. Uh, all the skulls that we have are ones that have either been donated to us or they're ones that we have gone out and bought replicas of so we could use to help teach uh, students and people about animals. Now, one of the basic things you can learn about an animal um, by its skull is just in general how big of an animal it is. So what I have right here, and you can probably barely see it, I'll put it on the table there, is a hummingbird skull. So just by looking at that, you can see that the hummingbird is not going to be a very large animal. It would look really silly if it had a bigger body than what would kind of proportionally fit with this head. Now we can scale that up, so if we look at, for example, this skull here, this is a raccoon skull, you're going to see that a raccoon is going to be a more medium-sized animal, and you can judge that based on its skull. And then lastly, if we go even bigger, what we have here is a grizzly bear skull. So by looking at this, you can definitely tell that the grizzly bear is a very, very large animal. Now the other thing that we can learn from skulls that's really neat is we can look at their teeth. And by looking at their teeth, we can learn a lot about the animals and what they eat, and even a little bit about what their behavior would be like. So let's take a closer look at some of these teeth. So when you're looking at an animal's skull and you're looking at their teeth, you're really looking at four different types of teeth. So if we look here at our skull, in the very front of the mouth, highlighted in yellow, you're going to see the animal's incisors. Behind them, highlighted in the aqua color, you're going to see the animal's canine teeth. And then behind them, there's a little bit of debate between scientists still, but typically most scientists consider the teeth behind the canines up to the last two teeth in an animal's skull to be what are called the premolars. And then of course, the last two teeth in the skull then, highlighted in purple, are considered to be your animal's molars. So let's take an example and look at one of our skulls and examine its teeth closely. I'm going to start with this skull to begin with. This is a fox skull. If we look at our fox skull closely, you can see in the front here our incisors are actually pretty pointed and sharp, and that's going to help the fox tear and rip meat from its prey. If we look at our canines, that's where we're really going to tell that this is a carnivore. You can see they're very, very large, a lot larger than the rest of the teeth that you'll see. And they are very sharp and pointed, once again, to give that fox some power to kill its prey and then to tear the meat off of it. Our premolars, you can see, are also very sharp and pointed. They look kind of a lot like shark's teeth, really, and they serve a very similar purpose. And then even our molars in the back here, you're going to see they have some pretty sharp ridges to them, um, unlike our molars, where they're going to be a lot flatter. So you can tell by looking at the teeth that the fox is definitely going to be an example of a carnivore. Let's look at another skull now. Let's examine this skull right here. So this is going to be the skull of a deer, and a deer is going to be an herbivore. So let's see how its teeth differ a bit from our fox's skull. You can see here we've got our incisors, and they're pretty flat, and they're a little bit pointed. Uh, you'll notice on the top of the skull, though, up here, we don't have any teeth. And so those um, bottom incisors work well with the top bony part of the mouth there to help really clip and shear off things like flower buds. We're not going to see any canine teeth on our deer because it's not a carnivore. And then for our premolars and molars, you're going to see that they are mostly flat. So they're not too pointed, um, not like our fox's teeth were. And those flat molars and premolars are really going to help grind down its food, things like grasses and like your flower blooms, and help it be easily digested by breaking it into smaller parts. And then the last skull we're going to look at is going to be a little bit of a trickier one. We're going to look at an omnivore skull. So omnivores, they eat both plants and meat, so they're going to have teeth that are going to be like our deer skull here, but they're also going to have teeth that are going to be sharp like our fox's skull here. So what I have for our omnivore is a pretty common animal here in Michigan. This is going to be a raccoon skull. So let's take a closer look at our raccoon's teeth. So with an omnivore skull, what you're going to see are some differences with their teeth. And they're a little trickier to figure out if you find a skull of one. Uh, you're going to see here in our raccoon skull that our incisors uh, look a lot like our deers. They're a little bit flatter. They're not as sharp and pointed. But we do have these very sharp and prominent canine teeth. Uh, because they're going to eat things 
like uh, crayfish, they might eat small rodents, even they're going to have sharper canine teeth to help kill those animals and to help tear part of the skin or flesh off. Same with our premolars, our ones closest to the canines we're going to see are a bit sharper than what they would be if this was just an herbivore. But as we get further back into the raccoon's mouth, you're going to see that they start to get a bit flatter, and that's going to be useful for it when it's eating things um, like bugs, or it's eating things like nuts or fruits, where it's going to have those teeth to grind them into smaller parts to make it easier for digestion. Now there is more we can learn from an animal's skull by looking at its features other than its teeth and figuring out what it's been eating. So I'm going to be releasing some follow-up videos coming out shortly that are going to explain some of those other things that we can learn.